Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm really good. That's good. Okay, so I just want to ask you to give an introduction of who you are. But before, I just want to say thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I'm a big fan oh, of no, yours. I'm completely fine. Thank you for asking me. Honestly, like I've never really had anything like this before, so it's really nice of you. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, could you just give an introduction of who you are, please? Sure. So um, my name's Liana Swan. I'm 21, um, and I used to swim for Pakistan um, for about eight years, um, internationally and nationally. Um, I've been to quite a few competitions for them around the world. Um, I think the most notable ones would have been the Commonwealth Games in 2014 in Glasgow, and then the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. Okay, cool. So, which um, I just want to ask you, how did you get into swimming? <clears throat> Um, so when I was growing up, I was like quite into quite a few different sports. I used to play um, a lot of tennis with my brother. Um, so I do that and then also have swimming. And then when I got to about 11 years old, um, my swimming coach said that I could be really good if I put all my time into swimming. So I had to make the decision whether to, to still do quite a few sports or just focus on swimming. So I focused on swimming. Um, and kind of, yeah, like started off training to like three or four times a week. And then eventually, yeah. um, when I was about 13, moved up to about eight. Um, and then continued doing that until I was 19. So like, how did you balance that with your, your schoolwork and all of that other stuff? Um, I mean, it's really tricky. And I'm sure like anyone that does any form of competitive sport will tell you that it's quite hard to balance it. Um, but I think you just have to be quite disciplined with yourself and like understand that it's like schoolwork isn't everything, but also swimming isn't everything. Like it was really important for me and especially my parents that I did well in school and school kind of always did come first. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't think that I missed out on anything when I was growing up that I would have done if I wasn't swimming. Like mm -hmm. I still had my friends outside of swimming I'd go and hang out with them a lot, but also it was just like the case of not staying out too late on a Friday night because I got to swim on Saturday morning and stuff like that. And I was okay with that because I really, it's like it's what I wanted to do. It's so, like me, yeah. I, I feel so that. So it, it wasn't that much of a struggle, I don't think. But you just, yeah, you really need to have some form of discipline. But that's what like sport does, it gives you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what are your favorite events in swimming? Um, my favorite event. I think it would definitely be the 200 IM. Mm -hmm. um, I did quite a lot of breaststroke, especially when I was younger. Um, and I do like the breaststroke events. So like 100 breast is a good one as well. But I think yeah. 200 IM. Or if it was short course, 100 IM especially. But yeah. that's kind of fair. So um, 200 IM definitely is my favorite event ever. <laughs> yeah. So um, what was it like swimming in the 2010 Asian Games, the 2011 Finna World Cup, and the 2013 Finna World Aquatics Championships? I mean, all of them were like such amazing experiences. Obviously, the 2010 one was like, it's quite early on from when I started competitively swimming, so it's really nerve-wracking. I think I was about 13 yeah. when that when that won. Mm -hmm. um, and because Pakistan didn't really have a big swimming team, or it still doesn't really have a big swimming team, it would, especially in the first few times, it would usually just be me and my mum and some of the officials that went traveling. So like it was, it was quite tricky. And because I was young, like I didn't really know people, I felt quite alone. And that that's why it was really nerve wracking, I guess, to be swimming yeah. at such a big event. I was so young, but I mean, it set me up so well. Like it was such a good experience. All of them. As like as I got older, I got to go to Kazan and stuff like that. As I was older, it made it a lot easier for me because I've been doing it for such a long time. And you just kind of you yeah. get into your routine. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing. You have kind of practiced everything so well that you need to do for yeah. your races. Yeah. Um. So I think that yeah, I definitely wouldn't have changed it, but yeah, it would have been nice to have a bit of a bigger team with around you. But mm -hmm. I guess from smaller smaller countries, especially in swimming, like they don't always have the biggest teams. Yeah. Um, so were there times when you felt like giving up and if so, how did you get out of it? Yeah, I mean, definitely not when I was younger, when I was younger, um, 
I really, really did love swimming. And um, it wasn't ever like a hassle for me. When you're young, you're, it's like elite sports fun because you're always improving. Like be, when you're young, you like every competition you go to could be a PB. And then as you get older, that's yeah. really unrealistic and it doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was kind of one of the main struggles that I had to understand and be comfortable with because I was so used to getting better every single time I competed when I was younger and I was I felt like I was amazing when I was younger and then as I got to like 16 17 especially 18 and 19 was when I couldn't do times that I was doing when I was 15 anymore and I had to understand that but then eventually I was like there were times when I was doing that and I was like clearly I'm not meant to be swimming I'm not good enough I was good when I was younger, but not anymore. But I think my mom and especially like my coaches around me were kind of like, this is what happens. This is what sport is. Yeah. Carry yeah. on. You like, you know what you're doing, carry on. And then eventually like your PBs come and my, like they did, <laughs> but it's just kind of, yeah. When it's been months and months without improving, it can really get to you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So is there a word or a mantra or something that you tell yourself before you race? Um, you know, I really don't think there is other than I, I know the things that I enjoy doing or that get me in the mood. Like I don't, yeah. if I was in the call room, I don't really speak to people. Like before that, I'm more than happy to go and like have a laugh with everyone. But when I'm in the call room, I kind of have my music in. Um, what kind of songs do I listen to? I think I just listen to like really songs that are kind of, kind of like, you're the best. Like yeah, a lot of Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same. Um, I can relate to that. Just, so um, I guess like when I'm on the blocks, like I get, I do get really nervous. So like in the courtroom, I'm nervous, like walking out, I'm nervous. But and then as soon as you stand behind the blocks, it's kind of like nothing else is really there. Like it's just like, this is yeah. your, like my race, you know what I need to do. And I kind of always recently, when I before I stopped swimming, like I used to really tell myself that it's not the end of the world. Like I yeah. know what I had to do. I have prepared for this, but like if I come out and I haven't done the time I wanted, like it's okay. Yeah. And I think taking that kind of pressure off me was a really big thing because when I was younger, it really, really always was about the time that I did, and if I yeah. didn't do it at the time, it was like really, really stressful for me. But if you just kind of take the pressure off, I also kind of realized when the pressure was off, I was able to just relax and swim my own race rather than just putting too much pressure on myself and having other people put too much pressure on me. Mm -hmm. And things kind of turn out better that way. Yeah. So I think the best thing to do is just kind of know that in all the preparation that you've done, you've done the best you can do. And if you've yeah. done that, then you're in like a comfortable space. Like you're always going to do as best as you can do. So I just wanted to ask you, um, what advice would you give to like younger girls who are starting swimming? I think I'd definitely just make sure that they are doing it for the right reasons and that while they're young, they're doing it and they still enjoy it. Yeah. I, I've, there's so many times now, especially as like sport gets more elite and people want to get into it, from such a young age, they'll put the younger girls and boys like into training regimes that are about that are yeah. like eight sessions a week and I don't it's not good for you I don't think it's good for their development you need, need to rest especially at that age mm -hmm. and if you're training that hard when you're 12 13 14 by the time you're 16 you, you're really not going to like it so I think you just need to make sure that you're not overtraining. you're doing this like the right amount of stuff so I'm not saying only swim twice a week you're still going to have to swim like four or five times but make sure it's still enjoyable because there's so many people, especially girls who get to 14, 15, 16 and they don't want to swim anymore because they don't yeah. like it or they've got other priorities. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think as long as you're still doing something that you love, it's, it's not really a chore, but it's up to you actually and your coaches and your parents to make sure that they're not pushing you from such a young age. Yeah. So like sort of so from yourself. Like so how, yeah. What's it like for you right now? For me, um, it's kind of the same thing like the pvs are going like kind of same as you said yeah <laughs> so yeah it's pretty true but it's okay no, that's so understandable like when you stop pving all the time it's a bit like what am i doing what have i done yeah. wrong i'm good as you anymore but 
I don't know, like you're still growing, you're getting stronger. Yeah. Super tired, like like all of those things come into it, and then eventually, when it's time, it, it'll come. Yeah. So, um, if you could go back in time and give your twelve year old advice, what would you say? Um, I think I'd have to say what I just told myself is to not put so much pressure on it and don't train that hard from such a young age because it did happen to me. Like when I was. 16, 17, 18, like I really didn't like swimming. I didn't want to do it. I didn't see the point. Like I was swimming for Pakistan, but, and I was very, I was very good in Pakistan, but obviously compared to the rest of the world, it wasn't really like that. So I was like, I don't really understand why I'm doing this. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't want to go to the Olympics to be fair. I was like, I'm not going to do anything. It won't, like what, what, what difference am I going to make? But my mum and I guess my coaches really were like, it's going to be, regardless of how you do, it's going to be an amazing experience. And it, like, it honestly was. It was incredible. And I'm so, so glad I went. Yeah. But I was very close to being like, no, I don't want to go. Yeah. Well, how does it feel to represent Pakistan? Like, really incredible. And I think when I was younger, I didn't appreciate that. I was just kind of like, everyone swims for their country, but obviously they don't. Yeah. <laughs> And going to Pakistan was obviously like was really really lovely. I was good when I was there. The girls were really really welcoming, which I didn't expect because I didn't train there. I trained in Dubai, yeah. so they don't know me. They didn't know me, and I came into a completely new environment for them. Um, but they were all like really nice, and I think that kind of made me realize that they just want to swim like as much as anyone else does. They just don't have really the support around them that I had and there's no reason why they can't be like as good as me bet like better than me I'm sure a lot of them would be better than me if they had the right facilities and training and it's just not there at the moment yeah um but about representing my country I think that like yeah it didn't really settle in and the Commonwealth Games was a really big one for me but it still didn't settle in and the one that really I think hit me was the South Asian Games, yeah, um, which was recently, and that's when I won my first like ever international medal medal yeah. since then. And like that was, I I really wasn't expecting to win it, and I don't know where it came from, but like it was the two hundred brushstroke, <laughs> and I won it, and I was just, I think I was just like shocked, and I I stood on the podium, and they played like the national anthem, and it was like the Pakistan flag, like it was something I'd never even experienced or. I probably won't ever experience again, but I think it, it was like really emotional. I never had really connected to anything like that before, and I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. And I was like, my mum was like in the crowd, and I was like, "No!" Nah. <laughs> and I, yeah, so like that, I think that that was just such a big moment for me, and that's when I was like, even if I don't swim again, or if I have nothing to do with it, I really want to be involved in making sure like the other girls from Pakistan get to feel like that because it was yeah. such an important. <laughs> um have you have you are you still swimming or are you have you stopped no so I no I don't swim anymore I so after Rio I kind of decided it was I was in my second year of university and I kind of decided that I would like to focus on that and try other things now because yeah I don't really see where I was going from the Olympics like I got to go to the Olympics and that was amazing but from there it's not going to get like, I'm not going to be able to do anything cooler than that. Yeah. And it was a lot of hours of training that I'd done for about 12 years. And I was just kind of like, this has been enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've been like, like, normally people get to that age and they're like, they give up. They, well, they stop swimming. Yeah. And I haven't, they haven't even done like, those kind of things. And because I had, I think it was a really big thing for me to be like, okay, I've, I've done it. It's that period of my life is kind of over. Yeah. But yeah, it's always, yeah, it always stay with me. So what was the most challenging part of swimming for you? Um, the early mornings, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think, yeah, just kind of a lot of it was like battling with myself. Yeah. What I should be doing and comparing myself to other people or to my friends who weren't swimming and had completely different lives. Um, I think all of that was like just quite a struggle, especially when I was growing up. 
because there were so many things that I thought that I should be doing or that I was missing out on. Yeah. And I, I actually really wasn't. And in the end, like swimming taught me just so many more things that I would have never have learned, like discipline, time management. A lot of it was to do with confidence and kind of like accepting myself is then like, if I'm not going to be, if I don't do the time I was meant to do, it's okay. Like I yeah. will do when I'm ready. Um, training was always like a big, not struggle, but I definitely found it the hardest. Like I really did like competing, but training sometimes definitely yeah. emotionally was really, really draining. And my coaches were very tough. <laughs> um, so I think that was a lot. And by the end of the day, I'd, I'd normally just be like exhausted after swimming yeah. and then school yeah. and then swimming. Yeah. Like by the time it was time for dinner, like I don't want to speak to anyone. <laughs> um, but then again, that's kind of what you have to do if you want to be in elite sport. Like yeah. if you just want to swim for fun, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be like that at all and you can enjoy it. But there gets to a time when it's not always going to be fun anymore and you have to sacrifice a lot of things if you actually want to make something. Yeah. And it's really, like it's and it's worth it. Like I, I looking back I didn't miss out on anything that I would have liked to have done. I was a completely normal child, but I but I swam. Yeah. So like sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, no, that's it. What oh, okay. Gonna... I was just going to say um what was your routine as a swimmer because you said early mornings like how many hours did you spend a day swimming? Did you go to the gym? So, what did you eat? Yeah, so I was part of like um, a pretty big club in Dubai. I think it's like the best club in Dubai called Hamilton Aquatics. Yeah. <laughs> I used to, um, so from literally when I was about 14, that's when I started swimming like seven or eight times a week. So my, it would generally be, so my week started on Sunday. It's different here because that's yeah. the weekend. Like a school, you're from like Qatar. Uh, Oman. Oman. It's the same. So it's the same. Yeah. Sunday is the start of the week. <laughs> yeah. So I'd swim Sunday morning at five until seven thirty, and then I'd go to school. Like I'd have my breakfast in the car, yeah. which my would bring to me, and then actually drive me to school. And I'd just go to school with my hair wet, like looking gross, and then. <laughs> I'd come home, I lived quite close to school, so I'd come home and have lunch, and if I had time, I'd do some of my homework, and then at about 4.30 or 5, I'd drive to the pool again, um, and swim, we'd do about like half an hour, 45 minutes of land training, which wasn't really gym, and I'm kind of glad of that, because when I was young, I didn't think I needed to go, like I didn't need to go to the gym, it was all a lot of body weight stuff, core stuff, like it was really yeah. important, I think. <laughs> But I wasn't lifting weights or anything like that. Um, so I'd do that for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I'd get in and swim for two hours. And then go home and eat dinner. So my mornings that I'd swim were Sunday morning, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, and Saturday morning. Yeah. And then I'd swim <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday evening. I'd have Wednesday off and then swim Thursday. Yeah. And Saturday. How many is that? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously sometimes like I really needed to be like, I can't do this one. But when you're in a club and that's your routine and everyone else is doing it, you kind of just get on with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I ate a lot and I slept a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> I had my mum, like my mum was such an angel. She, she literally made every single meal for me. I had like the biggest snack box at school, like everything was like, you need to eat if you're yeah. going to do this. So, is there anything yeah. specific you ate, like nutrition wise, or? I always ate like pretty well, but because I was swimming, I also like on the weekends could kind of eat whatever I wanted, and I wasn't going to get fat because yeah. <laughs> so like that's quite good, but I think the main things that are super important for any elite person who like wants to like have the energy and have the muscle to do it. Like you really need to be getting the right amount of protein. You really need to be getting the right amount of carbs. Like, and like girls, especially these days are like, no, I can't eat carbs. And I'm hoping that it doesn't transfer to elite sport. Like it's normally just girls that don't do sport, but like carbohydrates are so important. Like rice, yeah. pasta is good. Like it's good for you. Like, especially with the amount of exercise you're doing, it's not going to do anything. Like you need that energy. Yeah. In terms of like, 
I ate a lot of salmon, chicken, a lot of turkey just because it's like a little bit less fat. But I just kind of tried to keep it as interesting as possible. Yeah. But so that I could eat. Like, and I ate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you like didn't eat? Like you weren't allowed to? No, there was never anything I wasn't allowed to eat. Like my mum, because she she's like very healthy herself and has done, she's a personal trainer and she's done like a nutrition qualification as well. So she knows what I should be eating. And it's not like I should, um, sh I would I would never like eat McDonald's. Like she'd never go out and buy me McDonald's. Yeah. But if I was out with my friends, like I'd, I'd have McDonald's. Like it's not that I wasn't allowed it. It's just that we didn't really eat it. So it was a massive treat, like yeah. white bread. Actually, actually, yeah, my mom, like, never bought white bread. We always had, like, brown bread. Yeah. So if I was, if my grand came around and she bought white bread, I was like, wow. <laughs> but other than that, like, I think the best thing to do is just to, like, really not restrict yourself. Like, yeah. if you're hungry for something, eat it. But but just, like, know what's going to be good for you. Like, you're eating, like, a load of crisps and biscuits and stuff every day, like, isn't going to be the best for you. Yeah. But if you're hungry for them, like, you're more than, like, you can eat them because it's, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, that's when, like, girls especially really struggle and restrict themselves, and I don't think it's healthy at all. Yeah. Um, so, moving on to a different topic, have you ever been criticized about being a female swimmer in the Muslim world? I think I definitely have, but I kind of stay out of that. Like... I've got a lot of criticism from, especially from the men in Pakistan. Yeah. I don't really find it from the women or the girls, especially the swimmers. Like it's the men who have nothing to do with sport and like don't know anything about it, but still have something to say. Um, and a lot of that is, and I know my friend who she's the same age as me and she went to the Olympics of Pakistan in 2012, um, called Anam. Like I know that she faced it quite a lot. Just like, obviously, we grew up in the UK. She grew up in the UK. I grew up in Dubai. Yeah. We didn't grow up in Pakistan, and it has been, like, very, very conservative for us. But I understand, like, that's their culture, and that's what it's like. But then when they see that we aren't exactly, like, the way that they would expect us to be, like, that causes a lot of criticism. They're like, these aren't real Pakistanis. Like, they're, like, yeah, they're not actually from Pakistan. Like, they're, I think... Some of us like got called like really like really really rude names that shouldn't like it. You shouldn't call any girl, but like just because we were like slightly different. But it's not that we had any less respect for Pakistan. Like I absolutely, because I grew up in the Middle East, like I understand the culture. I understand yeah. what you can and do. But and I was and I was always aware of that. But obviously, if you are doing something that they are like jealous of or they don't understand then you're always going to get a bit of criticism. And I think the main thing that I faced was the fact that my dad was British yeah. and my mum was from Pakistan because, because obviously when I speak, I sound quite English. Yeah. <laughs> like I did this interview before um, Rio and they made this video of kind of like my daily routine or like me swimming and stuff. And yeah. it had me talking and a lot of the comments were like, she's not from Pakistan she's like faker like she like wow. why got her swimming for you rather than like the other girls who live in Pakistan and I completely I completely understand where they're coming from like I didn't live and train there but but I'm but I am from Pakistan and I was kind of like the best they had at that time and it wouldn't yeah. make sense to send anyone else yeah especially because it's not like I wasn't working hard like I would understand if I had just come in and I was just like trained once or twice a week and I still went. I was training really hard for it. Yeah. And I think that's what sometimes people don't see. Like they just want to see that I've come from nowhere. Yeah. But like I really, really did train for it. Yeah. So what is the most frustrating stereotype you encountered? Um, I think that the main thing, like even when I go to Pakistan and swim for them, there's always reporters there. And the main question that they ask me is, why do I swim for Pakistan instead of the UK? Yeah. And that's like, I guess that's a valid question. I am like half from the UK, half from Pakistan, but it's never been like a difficult choice for me because I would never have gotten the opportunities that I got 
swimming for Pakistan if I had swam for the UK. Like, there's a lot more people swimming there. Yeah. The stand, it, it is really, like, the standard of swimming is so much higher. There's a lot more people that are out there who, like, want it. And it's not that I chose the easier option, but I chose, like, the option that would work out best for me. And I really think it has worked out best, hopefully, for, yeah. for Pakistan as well. Because I have, like, because... I would never have been interviewed by anyone like this if I'd done it for the UK or if I'd even attempted to yeah. do it for the UK. But, like, if it means that I kind of literally just, like, helped or, like, encouraged one person to swim, like, it honestly means the world to me. And I wouldn't have done that if I was swimming for the yeah. UK. So what, what were your goals when you, like, started swimming? And do you think you achieved them? I mean, I, yeah. Well, my goals when I started swimming, I was really young. And I think everyone who starts swimming competitively, like, wants to swim in the Olympics. Like, that is everyone's yeah. dream. Yeah. And that definitely was my dream. Like, when I was 12, 13, that was where I was, like, I got told I could do it. Like, my coach was like, you can do it. I, that was, like, my dream. I definitely thought that that was everything I wanted yeah. to do. But as I got older and my time weren't improving as much and I wasn't really enjoying it as much, it, like, it really did change my focus. Like, that wasn't my goal. In fact, I really didn't want that anymore because I didn't think that I would be good enough or that I would do anything notable. So yeah. when it came to the time when I went to to nationals and then, at, like, the, at, like, the Olympic, they weren't trials, but you had to swim in Kazan in Russia to qualify for them at the World Championships. So I went to do that, and I was, it kind of got to the time where I was like, I really don't want to do this. But... But I, re I think I had to kind of step back and be like, it's only for another year. You've trained this hard for this long. Why would you give something like that up? Because it's yeah. an opportunity I'm never going to get again. And I, yeah, so I think that kind of just got me through it, just being like, the kind of that the end was close, but also that I worked so hard for this long, like not to give up then. Yeah. So my goals definitely did change. But if I was to ask my little 13 year old self then I think I got I did achieve them <laughs> yeah that's good do you have any like funny stories regarding your swimming career um I mean there's like probably a few so when you you know in training do you have, ever swim with like a front snorkel yeah yeah so when we when I first started swimming like I I, I grew up in Dubai in Bahrain so that's when I first started swimming and we were kind of like, it was kind of just for my school and it was fun. And then when I got to Dubai, I met Chris who owns Hamilton and it got very serious. So he said like on my equipment list that I had to buy, it was all the normal things like a kickboard, pull boy, hand paddles, all of that. And then it said snorkel. Me and my mum were like, why would I need a snorkel? I've never seen anyone use a snorkel before in training. So we went out to like, I don't know, go sport or whatever and bought a snorkel so like what well, from the side with the goggles I like kind of came out they were like what are you doing <laughs> I was like, I've got a snorkel like I'm ready <laughs> yeah that's so funny I'm like, no absolutely not like go on this website this is what you need to buy like the proper yeah fit. So, like, <laughs> like oh my god and then I think I'm just like I'm just really clumsy like there's been so many times when I've got out the pool at like a full-on international competition when I went into Do what was Doha Doha was part of the World Cup I think one of the World Cup ones. Um, it was literally only a few years ago, but I got out the pool, and you know how it's when they make the pools that aren't there for for a long time. It's like got the carpet around. Yeah. And then they had Fina written in like plastic, like on the like in like nice thing, but like obviously that when that's wet, it's really slippery. Like I got out the pool, waved to my mum, and was walking over, and just like Ooh. went behind me on this thing, and no one helped me. Everyone's kind of like. I have, oh like, my god! Yeah, <laughs> I just, it's just like little things. You gotta just enjoy it and just have fun. Yeah, it, yeah. Honestly, nothing's that serious. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you like swimming more in like teams or like alone? Or have you always been swimming in a team? No, I I swam in a team, and then it wasn't in the year, the two years leading up to Rio. Um, so I went to university. And I didn't join the team there. I did all my training on my own there. And then when I went back to Dubai, I didn't swim for Hamilton anymore. And I swam for um, Dubai Masters. 
um, which is a guy called Seth who's really great. And he was like, he's who I trained with in the last year up to the Olympics. And that was kind of, that was a lot more on my own. I didn't have people my age. Um, and it really does differ. I think it's important to be, especially when you're young, in a club um, with people who are going through the same stuff as you and understand it and understand that training's hard. So I definitely think that training in a team is like definitely necessary. Yeah. Because you kind of, it, you really get each other through it because there's very hard times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, are you in a club? Yeah, I'm actually like in a team. team. I just like don't really swim in a club. Like if Hamilton was in Oman, then I may like do both. But yeah, there's like yeah. I mean, Hamilton's got really big at the moment, and I think that kind of values have changed a bit. But there are yeah, if you can find a good club that you get on with, or even in your team. So you swim with quite a few people that are your friends. Um. Well, I'm like the only girl, and there's like kind of like twenty other guys, and so. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes, but, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, but that's hard. That's really hard. Yeah. Do you, why, do you not know, like, are there no other girls that would swim or that want to swim? Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of girls who swim just because of how conservative, like, Oman is. And I get that, yeah. like, the whole thing, just like you said. So what kind of happens now when you go and swim? Is your other boys and your coach accepting or is it other people that don't like it? Yeah, the other people don't like it. The the swim team is like really nice to me and everything. Like the coach is nice and but I feel like a lot of other people don't agree with what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially cuz I don't look Omani at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Me. laughs> I look like I don't know, completely not yeah. Amani, so it's like super funny <laughs> yeah I think there's like honestly there's always going to be people who just like really don't understand yeah and I mean I really think a lot of it is jealousy like you can swim and a lot of people can't and a lot of people can't because they're scared to even try because of what they're saying about people yeah like they want people to say that about them and you're actually going out there and doing it, I think it's really, really good. And the fact that you're there, like, there must be so many girls that really want to swim, and they need you. <laughs> yeah. To kind of, like, be like, I'm swimming, I'm doing it, I'm doing good. Like, they really need to see something like that, otherwise it's never going to change. Yeah. Have you, do you, so do you represent Oman yet, or is that what you would like to do? Um, well, I've represented them in, like, small competitions in Oman, Dubai, and Singapore, but that's about okay, it. Wow. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, I do, that's like, great. 50 breast, 50 free, 100 breast. Like, I do, like, I like sprints, mostly. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. That's really amazing. So what kind of is your next? step what are you looking to do obviously like I want to go to like bigger competitions but we'll see <laughs> what happens <laughs> yeah so do you are you involved with like the Oman Swimming Federation do they help you at all or are you what how does it work or do you just kind of sign up by yourself um I think I was swimming like with my school team and then they just like phoned me or I don't know they like we got in contact from someone else, and I actually, like, we really, like, tried to get on the team because, like, they would, they were saying, like, no, you can't get on the team, and then we just kept on, like, trying to persist, and they eventually let me go on the team. Oh, my gosh, yeah. amazing. Oh, that's really, no, well done. Yeah. Yeah, I really think, you, as long as you're still enjoying it, you should really stick with it because you, like, I guess you never know who you're inspiring because I certainly didn't. Yeah, really? Have you ever, like, met anyone, like, who you've inspired or, like, you know? I mean, I haven't, like, I don't think I've met a no. message. And it, honestly, it really does shock me because I'm, like, is it frozen? Yeah, I think it just got frozen. I think it got stuck. Did you? Okay. So, yeah, I was going to say it really does shock me because I just, I don't expect it. And I wouldn't even, like, I don't even know how you know about me like yeah. why would you know how, like who swam for Pakistan because yeah I just I think the whole time especially when I was swimming it was kind of I really was just thinking about myself and I was like I don't want to do this and it's hard and and now that I have done it 
I just get messages like the one from you and like other people sometimes as well, especially when I was in Rio, a lot of people messaged me and I was kind of like, wow, like people know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my intention, but it, I'm so happy that it's even had an impact on anyone because I really didn't expect it, but yeah. I'm really happy that it has. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I think we'll wrap up the interview. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, I mean, like, thank you to you, because, like, it's honestly made my whole day. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and I really, yeah, I, I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing, and I really think you should stick with it. But at the same time, when you feel that it really is too much or you aren't enjoying it anymore, you have to to think about yourself and just make sure that you put yourself first because yeah it's hard it really is hard and it's not for everyone and I think I learned that and I don't it wasn't for me I think it takes like a certain person to really push themselves that hard and I don't think I really was that person but if you can be like that's incredible and I really think that you can do it thank you so much you're an inspiration. <laughs> thank you so well, much. Thank you. I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours, so it's like I'll look out for you at all these competitions now. <laughs> okay, Good luck great. With everything. Thanks. Bye. Bye.